Have you ever wished you could have more data about your affiliate links? Like what's the click-through rate? And which pages convert best? And who the heck is clicking these links anyway? Well, it's your lucky day, because you can have all this data and more thanks to the magic of Google Analytics, event and conversion tracking. And I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started, including how to track affiliate clicks as events, how to set up custom goals, and how to do it all so you can stay compliant with the terms of service of Amazon Associates so you don't get booted out of the program. So if that all sounds good to you, just give me a thumbs up real quick and let's go. In order to track affiliate clicks on your site, there are two things that you need. One is a Google Analytics account. You can either use the newest GA4 version or the previous version, which is called Universal Analytics. Second, you'll need a link cloaking plugin that formats your links as a shortened URL with a category base in front. You'll commonly see bloggers use go, out, or recommends for their cloaked links. Now, this link cloaking step is not 100% required, but it does make the rest of the setup process a lot easier, so I do recommend it. Two of the best plugins for this are Thirsty Affiliates and Pretty Links. The free version is all you need, and you can find both of these in the official plugin repository. Regardless of which plugin you choose, the setup process is basically the same. First, you select a URL base for your links, and the link will be formatted like this, yourdomain.com slash base slash link URL. Then you can start adding your affiliate links one by one, so that whenever you use your shortened URL in the content, the plugin will redirect your visitor to the corresponding affiliate link automatically. So let me show you how to quickly add these cloaked links to your posts. You can type the shortened URL manually. You can insert the link using your plugin's little insertion button here in the editor, or you can even add the original affiliate link, and then the plugin will auto replace it on the front end if you choose that setting. Once you've got the link cloaking configured, it's time to set up the actual event tracking inside Google Analytics. And there's two ways to do this. There's the official Google method using their tool called Google Tag Manager. And then there's the WordPress way. We can use a free plugin called Gravitate Event Tracking. I'm gonna show you both methods, but let's do the plugin method first because it's a bit easier for beginners and doesn't require you to install any tracking scripts on your website directly. Gravitate Event Tracking is available for free in the official repository, and I'll link it down below as well. It hasn't been updated in a long time, but it still works perfectly as of 2022. Now, once you install and activate, you can access the settings page from Dashboard, Settings, Gravitate Event Tracking. Here you'll see a bunch of example event patterns, such as file downloads, form submissions, and scroll events. Simply disable or delete the ones that you don't need. To track affiliate links, we'll need to create a custom event. So click Add Custom Tracking, then give it a name, Next, we'll set the event category, which we'll use to filter the events inside Google Analytics. Then set the event action to click. And for the event label, we're gonna use one of these available magic tags. I'll choose link relative URL, which will let us track each individual affiliate link by passing the URL of the link target to Google Analytics. We're gonna then use this to set up our goal tracking in just a minute. The trickiest step is getting the selector targeting just right. This tells the tracking script which elements in the page should trigger the event. The pattern that we're going to use is a opening bracket href asterisk equals quotes and then your link base inside the quotes close brackets make sure to include your forward slashes as well this pattern will match any url with a link target containing that slug for better accuracy you can put your domain name before the link base as well for my website i put build that website slash go inside the quotation marks i'll make sure to paste this pattern in the video description as well so you can just copy it directly okay let's test our tracking script if you use Chrome browser, there's a free extension called Google Analytics Debugger. This will add a new tab to your Chrome DevTools panel. This is completely optional, but I find it helpful for testing event tracking. If you want to learn more about Chrome DevTools, check out this video right here. All right, so we'll click record and refresh the page. You can see it's already detected my Google Analytics tag. Now, when I click an affiliate link, we can click on this tracking tag to see which events were detected. We have a page view event as well as the affiliate click event. So everything is working properly. And in my analytics account under real-time tracking and then events, you can see the event right here. Here's the event category. And you can see the target URL passes the event label as well. Next, I'll show you how to create the exact same setup using Google Tag Manager. Log into Tag Manager using the same email address as your analytics account. That's tagmanager.google.com. Once inside Tag Manager, you'll see that they organize your web properties into what they call accounts. These are really sub-accounts of your Tag Manager account. You can group multiple websites inside one of these sub-accounts, and each will have their own Tag Manager container. If you don't have an account created yet, click Create Account. 
then give it a descriptive name, select your country, and enter your website URL. For target platform, choose web. Then click create and accept the Google terms and conditions. The first step when setting up a new container is to create a custom variable that will store your Google Analytics tracking ID. Note, you can skip this step if you're using the newest GA version 4 analytics. This is only required for universal analytics. So go to variables, new, give it a name, then click variable configuration. For the variable type, choose Google Analytics settings. Then enter your Google Analytics tracking ID, which you'll find in your Google Analytics account on the admin settings panel. Next, let's set up a trigger. This is the set of conditions that will trigger our click event. So go to triggers, new, give it a descriptive name, then click trigger configuration. Set the trigger type to just links, then set it to fire on some link clicks. And we'll set this to fire when the click URL contains, and then enter the link prefix that you selected earlier when setting up your cloaking plugin. So mine would be slash go. And don't forget the forward slashes and click save. The last step is to create our event tag. So go to tags, new, give it a name, then go to tag configuration. Then select your tag type. Select universal analytics if you're using universal analytics and select GA4 event if you're using Google Analytics version four. I'm still using universal analytics, so here's the setup for that. We're gonna set the track type to event, I use affiliate links as the category, click as the action, and then for label, we're gonna use a variable. Go to built-ins and choose click URL. Finally, for the Google Analytics settings variable, choose the custom variable that we set up earlier. For those of you using the latest GA4 analytics, the setup is slightly different. Add your analytics measurement ID, which you'll find here in your Google Analytics account panel. Give the event a name, and then you can actually create custom parameters, as many as you want. This is the event data that you'll pass when the event is triggered. In this example, I'm passing the click URL and the link text as parameters. Both of these are built-in variables that you can access by clicking the variable button right here. Regardless of which analytics version you're using, the next step is to connect a trigger to the tag. Here, I'll just select the trigger we already set up. Then just go ahead and click save. Now don't forget the most important step. We need to publish this container before installing Tag Manager on the website. So click the Submit button, then write a descriptive name for this version of your container. You can also add additional details about changes you've made if you want. Okay, now I'm ready to install this tag on my site. To add the Tag Manager script to WordPress, I'm gonna use a plugin. You can also install the tags manually if you're comfortable editing theme template files. Two good plugin options are SiteKit, which is an official Google plugin, and the Tag Manager plugin by Thomas Geiger. I'm gonna use the second plugin because it's a bit lighter weight and it has an auto install option for generate press theme as well as a few other themes. So install and activate and click the notification link to go straight to the plugin settings. Then copy the ID of your Tag Manager container and add it to the field labeled Tag Manager ID from the plugin settings. After that, we have to choose a script placement option. I use Generate Press Theme, which is supported by the Codeless Injection option, so I'll choose that. If your theme isn't supported, I recommend trying the Footer Placement option first because it doesn't require you to manually insert the script or edit any template files on your site. Finally, make sure to clear your caching plugin. I use WP Rocket for caching and site optimization, and that helps me achieve GT metric scores that look like this. You'll find the link in the video description if you want to check it out. All right, let's test our settings. When I click my affiliate link, the click event is already showing up in my real-time panel under the events tab. And you can see the click category, action, and label just as we set them up. Okay, now what about tracking affiliate links to Amazon Associates? After all, you may have heard stories about Amazon affiliates getting banned for link cloaking. Now, link cloaking is actually a complicated subject with Amazon Associates. They don't strictly forbid using redirection services like this. There are two specific rules that you have to follow. One is it has to be clear to Amazon where your clicks are coming from. And two, it has to be clear to the visitor that they're gonna be directed to amazon.com. And you can do this through a combination of link text or clear disclosures or a button that says buy on Amazon, but it's probably a best practice just to use the amazon.com links or the link shortening service they provide, amzn.to.
Fortunately, it's really easy to track these links. You can use the exact same setup that we already did. You simply change the matching pattern for your link target to be amazon.com or amzn.to instead of matching that link prefix uh, in the URL shortening service that we set up. So if you're gonna set this up for Gravitate event tracking, your link would look something like this. And if you were gonna set it up for Tag Manager, your pattern would look something like that. All right, let's head on over to Google Analytics and we're gonna set up some goal tracking. Okay, so here's the plan. We're gonna take the click events that we already set up and we're gonna define them as conversion goals in Google Analytics. And this does a couple things for us. Number one, you're gonna be able to track your goal conversion rate. So you'll see how often your visitors click through to your various affiliate programs. Number two, we're going to be able to assign a dollar value to each goal. So you can see how much revenue or approximate revenue each piece of content on your site is contributing, how many affiliate clicks you're getting per article. And number three is a bit more advanced, but in the future, if you wanna really optimize your site, you can run A-B split tests where you set a goal as the target metric that you wanna increase for this split test. And you can actually see what site modifications will, will result in more affiliate clicks and more revenue. To create goals in your analytics account, go to admin settings, Select a view and then click goals. Create a new goal and we'll make it a custom goal and give it a name. As an example, I'm going to set up a goal for a specific affiliate program. I like to create goals for my top five to 10 performing affiliate products by total revenue. The goal type is event. And now we'll set the event conditions using the event parameters that we created earlier. So match your event category to be exactly the same as the way you set it up earlier and set the label to either contain or begin with the pattern that you want to match. For example, I'm gonna make this goal triggered anytime the event label matches slash go slash crocoblock, which is for my crocoblock affiliate program. We didn't set up a value when we set up the event. So toggle the switch to no and set a custom value. This is your estimate of how much each click is worth on average. You can calculate this very accurately by looking at your affiliate metrics for that program. You can then click verify this goal to test it. You wanna see a conversion rate that's greater than zero to know that it's working. Note, for this to work, you must have already had one event track to that affiliate link. Then click Save. Now, once you've had goals set up and running for a while, you'll have all kinds of valuable data. You can see the dollar value of each page on your site, how much an average page view is worth, and even analyze visitor value by demographics or traffic source. Whether you're just getting started in affiliate marketing or looking to grow an established site, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I plan to make affiliate marketing a much bigger focus going forward. And I'd love to hear any ideas for videos that you have. Now, in the meantime, check out this video right over here. It might change your life.